Okay, today I want to focus on oscillators. Oscillators are the bomb. I'm just going to save. Whoa, test. Save. So I'm just building this very simple synthesizer that Cabbage creates for us once we create a new Cabbage instrument. Bum, bum, bum. Right. So this instrument already has an oscillator created for us. Oscillators are great. Oscillators, the long name for an oscillator is a table lookup oscillator. And it reads from a function table. And the function table is declared in the CS score section generally. You can declare them in an instrument section as well. But for these basic examples, I'm going to declare them in the score section. Okay, so for now, just we'll come back to function tables in a moment, but function tables, this particular function table is going to create a waveform like this, a single cycle of a sinusoidal waveform. Okay, you can determine what shape it creates, what kind of waveform it creates. Uh, there's plenty of ways to do that. We'll return to that in a moment. Right now we'll look at the oscillator. So, oscillators come in various forms. This one is, is an interpolating oscillator. You've got a truncating oscillator and each of them work in a slightly different way and offer different advantages and disadvantages. The good thing about the oscilli and the reason why it should be the de facto oscillator you use is its high resolution oscillator. Okay. Now in this case I'm using a high resolution oscillator with a fairly small table so I know I'm going to get slated for that. Anyhow, so we saw when we're looking at opcodes that all opcodes have a particular set of inputs, input arguments which are on the right hand side and output arguments which are on the left hand side. Okay. So what are these particular input arguments for an oscillator? Okay, well the first one is always amplitude. It's amplitude. The next one is always frequency and the next one is function table number. Okay. So the amplitude for this oscillator, every time we press this key or this key or whatever, the amplitude is going to be determined by P5. And P5 is taken from here. Okay. So in the CS options, we have this thing saying MIDI velocity amp is 5, which means that P5 is going to be replaced with the velocity coming from the MIDI keyboard. So when I play this note loud at the end of it, it's quite loud, and when I play it here, it's quite, it's lower. Okay, so that's the amplitude. It's always the first input parameter to an oscillator. The next input parameter is the frequency, and we can see from the CS options that that's from here, MIDI key CPS. So MIDI key CPS is passed P4, and every time we press a note on this keyboard, we get the MIDI note converted to a frequency. So we get in hertz, which is cycles per second. Okay. So the interesting thing is, if for example I'm pressing C4 or C3, which should be 261 hertz, it means that this oscillator is reading the contents of this function table 261 times a second, which gives rise to this pitch that we have, middle C. When we play this note, it's twice that frequency. It's going to be reading it twice as fast. So we're going to get twice the frequency, twice the pitch. The final parameter is the function table number. And it relates to the function table that we have down here. So this one here tells C sound to read from function table 1. So every time this instrument runs, and it runs, going to run, we can say it's going to run 44,100 times a second. Not technically correct, but shh. So if we play this, every time this code is executed, this line here is reached by C sound oscillate, it's going to output a new value from the table. In fact, we can we can look at the table. It might make things easier. So I'm going to put in a table, 10, 10. So this is a table widget. Uh, with 180 and height, say, what height is this thing currently? 300, uh, make it to 180. 
Okay, and I'm going to specify the table number. Table number one. Okay. Oh, that's a bit thin. I can make it a little bit wider. Now that's a bit better. So this is function table one, right? So this table here looks like this. If we change the table, we're obviously going to change how it looks. So let me first explain the different parameters here. The first parameter is the table number, easy. Second parameter is the creation time. You can leave that at zero, it's not really important. The next one is the table size. This is important. The bigger this is, the better resolution the table is going to be. So that's why I said earlier, I'm going to get slated for using a high resolution oscill with a really small table. Anyway. Uh, the next thing is the gen routine. So this number, so this is P1, P2, P3, P4. P4 sets the gen routine and that's going to determine the shape that's drawn in here. Okay, so if we change this to a different thing like 7 or 5, it's going to generate a different shape in here. The numbers that follow the gen routine, remember P4 is the gen routine, see if I can do a P with the mouse. Hey, that's not bad. Okay, so the following P fields are set up to work with particular gen routines. So each gen routine will have um, its P fields will control a different aspect of the shape it's going to create. In this case, each successive number that we add here is going to control the amplitude of each successive harmonic from the harmonic series. Now, the harmonic series is... So all sounds can be broken down into a set of sinusoidal components. The first of these sine waves is known as F0, which is a fundamental frequency and the rest of the harmonic components are going to be related to that frequency. They're going to be integer multiples of that frequency. So the first so the, that's the first harmonic is F0, the next harmonic is going to be 2 times F0, 3 times F0, 4 times F0, and so on and so forth. Each of the numbers that you put after the 10 determine the strength of each of those harmonics. So let me clear the screen here a second and put in 0.5 and save that. So now we see we've got a different function table shape here. If I add in 0.25, okay. So we'll keep getting, so as I add in successive harmonics, we're getting a different shape. And if we listen to the sound, we're also getting quite a different sound. That's quite different from this. Okay, so your function tables can be used generate different timbres and don't forget that C sound is going to read the function table its third input parameter to an oscilli or to an, any of the oscillos opcodes for that matter determines the function table and your function table number has to be given down here after the F so you can use different function tables for different things the simplest um, gen routine is probably Gen 10, which just creates what's known as a composite waveform. But there's lots of different types of Gen routines that will help you kind of create all sorts of interesting things. Yeah. Okay. So that's oscillators. Brief, brief introduction to oscillators.